Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and an interesting update to the Springbok squad with Damien Blinzer being ruled out of the end of year tour which means that he will not have played a single Springbok match this season. Uh, incredibly unlucky for him. I mean we go back a year ago and he was a year today by the way since he won the World Cup and you just think of how good he was in that World Cup. For me potentially one of becoming one of the best players in the world over the next few years. And we were quick to forget about him because of the rise up in Fassi, but we're so looking forward to seeing him back in the mix this um, November. However, as usual, one person's uh, missed opportunities, another person's uh, opportunity gained. And that person is Cameron Harnacombe, who will replace Damien Willemster in the squad. Uh, very Rusty Rasmus type of replacement in terms of a fullback injured or a utility back being injured and being replaced with an eighth man. But it's just more about kind of the way that the Springbok squad is sort of compromised and, and the way it's sort of made up. And, and that means that there are so many different players who can cover different positions that you don't necessarily need to uh, replace, you know, certain players with a, a direct replacement. And that, you know, I think immediately when we look to the squad, there seems to be a lot of outside backs. With Mapimpi, Kurt Lawrence, and um, Chesa Colby as wing options. You had Fassi, Blue, and Damon Williams as potential fullback option. We had six outside backs, which you probably didn't need. I think it was a one. Oh, and Kenny Moody, by the way. Stephen, before you forget, don't uh, take into consideration Kenny Moody, who's also sort of potentially covering centers. So, probably didn't need that many, but it's one of those situations where I didn't want to leave out anybody because that's kind of the core of the squad. So, quite simple from a squad maker point of view to bring in an additional loose forward uh, in the form of Cameron Harnacombe, who's been smashing that door down. And in fact, he's probably the biggest omission from the original box squad that was named for the Autonation Series, which has already had a few tweaks. We saw Volker Lowe and Johan Krabbelar getting call-ups last week due to the injury to Jan Hendrik Vessels, and now we are seeing a, another uh, addition to the squad. So this is what Rusty Rasmus had to say about Cameron Hardikorn, who's obviously a former junior Springbok and uh, been a key member of the Bulls side this year. He said, uh, Damien has been in great form for the DHL Stadium since returning from injury and we feel for him after missing out on all 10 tests this season due to a finger injury. He said, but as was the case with Volko and Jan's call-up, we are excited to see what Cameron brings to the team. He was in the group of players included in our alignment camps earlier this year, so he's familiar with some of our structures and the Springbok ethos, and we have no doubt he will grab his opportunity with both hands. He said, we are comfortable with the depth and versatility we have among the backs in the squad, so we decided to include an another forward to add to our loose forward stocks. Um, they will depart, by the way, I think it's actually yesterday that they actually left to uh, go to Jersey for a week before they moved to Scotland. Now let's talk about Cameron Hanukkah, shall we? Is this the potential Dwayne Fumulian long-term sort of Thor replacement in terms of the way he plays the game? Uh, and I think he generally is, you know, he's got a tremendous skill set, uh, which is something that Dwayne Fumulian had alongside being incredibly physical and athletic. So he's a great all-round player, is Cameron Hanukkah. He's pretty good trusty under the high ball, something he'll only get better as with exposure, especially international games. It's a very important part. And um, physically, for example, very good defender, very good with ball in hand, very good at the breakdown as well. And we always talked about when trying to replace Dwayne Fermilion, you know, what are you replacing? And we were replacing somebody who was defensively so intelligent. Uh, we were replacing somebody who's a massive leadership figure. From a skill set point of view, we were replacing somebody who is very good at the breakdown, who's very good defender, who is such a good um, you know, ball threat and a very calm presence. And if you look at the eighth man options we've got, we've got bits of Dwayne from in and amongst that. I mean, for example, Jasper Visa is an absolute you know, scud missile type of carrier. He's relentless. He will carry all day, very good with ball in hand, getting a lot better under the high ball, not necessarily a breakdown threat. Um, and uh, defensively, he's gotten a lot better, but you know that's something he's had to, he's had to work on quite a lot, especially from a... a uh, discipline point of view. You look at Quaker Smith, for example, now he's got the entire skill set, tremendous at the breakdown, very usually very reliable under the high ball. Not necessarily the same sort of physical presence on defense and attack. I think he's a very good ball carry. He always finds meters, but a very different type of player. Similarly, for example, an Alred Lowe is a different type of player to an Evan Ruiz. So they've all got sort of aspects, but we had an, an anomaly, you know, we had a very special player in Dwayne Fermeur, and he was always going to be a very difficult player to try and replace. Now, I do think Cameron Hardikorn is probably the most in the mold of Dwayne Fumier. You know, he could probably play at six as well. 
So he is quite versatile. I think he will be able to play potentially across that back row, which uh, makes it very useful to the box. And I, th I think he's, you know, for somebody who's so long, so young, he's a very intelligent player, you know, and he just sort of oozes that kind of uh, that comfortability, you know, somebody that just looks like he's been playing at this level for a long, long time because he just finds it so comfortable. So I really hope that he does get an opportunity at the end of the year tour. I hope he manages to get that sort of step up. Uh, you know, just like Ulrich Lowe has put himself on the Bach radar. Similarly, he could put himself on the on the Bach radar long term and uh, stay within these squads in the next few years. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.